The next speaker is Pernilla Sandvall, CEO at Vint Research. Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm going to present the company and Foxy5, our drug candidate preventing the metastatic process. And who am I to speak about this? I have been the CEO for Wind Research now since May. My background is that I'm a pharmacist from Uppsala University and I've been with Merck and Company, a big pharmaceutical company, for more than 20 years doing clinical research and then for 10 years with a very small company, Index Pharmaceutical, as the uh, COO. We are listed on Spotlight and therefore this is our disclaimer. The investment highlights and the key messages I want to reveal today are those. So FOXA5 is a unique drug candidate. It's in clinical phase two development and we are looking at colon cancer. It's preventing the cancer to spread. There is a high medical need in stage two and three colon cancer. I'm going to show you that in a little bit. There is a significant commercial um, opportunity here. So if we're targeting 65,000 patients globally, which is approximately one third of all patients, which I think is, is relevant to do. Uh, this means that a yearly revenue could be more than 500 million US dollars. Foxy5 was discovered by Professor Tommy Andersson. He is at Lund University and he is also one of the founders of the company. In the, he has done research with the protein wind 5 a and cancer. We are an experienced organization, both when it comes to clinical development, business development, and also uh, commercialization. I mentioned colon cancer, but this is an additional value opportunity because it's possible to also use FOXY5 in other cancer types. So those are the key messages, and I'm going to give a little further details of those as we go along. So colon cancer, every year more than one million people are getting diagnosed with colon cancer. So if a person gets the diagnosis and the, the cancer tumor is really local in the colon, then the five-year overall survival is actually 71%. However, if the cancer is spread to other part of the, of the body so that you have metastasis, the overall five-year survival is only 14%. So preventing the metastatic process is a major unmet medical need for cancer treatments to, to avoid relapse and death. Oncology and cancer could be quite complex, but there are different stages in colon cancer. We're talking about stage one to four, where in stage one, the cancers, it's just cancer cells and they are in the colon. And as you, as a cancer type, develop then to stage two, three and four, it, it progress and growth. And when you're at stage four, you do have metastasis and this, so the cancer is in other parts of the company. And this is what we are showing in this slide. The position in a market then. So the stages are just uh, at the bottom here and all patients get surgery. That is what you do. Remove the tumor in colon. If you're, uh, if the patient is in stage one, uh, there are no further treatments, so no pharmacology treatment. However, um, if you are in two, three and four, there are other treatments. You have biomarkers, it's called, and a biomarker is uh, something you can measure in the tumor that could predict if the treatment will be effective or not. So there are chemotherapy. There's no biomarkers for those, and they are used for stage two to four, depending on, on the tumor and the patient. If, if, you're, if the patient is in stage four, there are numerous of uh, targeted t therapies. Some have biomarkers and others have not. There are a lot of competition in, in oncology and in stage four here. So there are several candidates on the market. For stage two and three patients though, we haven't really seen any. There is a study going on with aspirin or acetyl salicylic acid. So this study is ongoing, but Otherwise, it's an opportunity for FOXA5 to treat the patients in two and three who have a risk for developing the metastasis. I would like to do the uh, parable with the dandelion. I think most of you know that when the, when the flower has bloomed, you see this uh, typical seed stand and 
all the seeds can be scattered with the wind and then you can have many, many, many dandelions. And this is a way to, to sort of uh, tell you about what is the metastasis of a tumor. So from a more scientific perspective, FOXY5 mimics the WIND5A protein and thus preventing metastasis to form. So the WIND5A is inducing signaling events and it leads to an increased adherence of the neighboring cells. So, so the cancer cells are more stuck to those cells and to the surrounding tissue. So thus it's impaired the migration and invasion of cancer cells. But WIND5A cannot be given, uh, it's a large protein, it cannot be given as a, as a, as a drug. But FOXY5, it's a smaller molecule, it's a peptide, and it mimics the WIND5A and the signaling effects that it has. So thus it's resulting in a decreased ability of the cancer cells to move, and we call it migrate, invade, and thus metastasize. Trying to illustrate this in the pictures. So the picture in, in the middle or to the left, it's when a tumor has a high degree of WIND5A expression. So thus the cancer cell stay in the tumor and it's not released in the same way as in the other picture where there is a low expression of WIND5A. Then the cancer cells could then migrate and spread to other parts of the body and that is metastasis to be formed. I say that we have, have this, so we have done studies uh, and Prior to do clinical research, you have to do a lot of, of studies that is non-clinical, which means that are done in, in cells or animals. And we have seen that the FOXY5 really mimics what WIND5A is doing in cells, and also then in vivo studies. Um, and we have seen effects on metastasis in the liver, in the lungs, in the lymph nodes. We have also seen that the number of stem cells are affected, actually, in a specific uh, model. Stem cells, one can say it's like sleeping cells. So it's very dif difficult and to actually see anything. This has to be further explored, but it's, uh, it's very, very interesting. And in this model, we also could see a reduced tumor size. So all this uh, was done prior to the clinical development. And what one also has to do before you go into patients is that you need to do toxicology studies. And that is, is man mandated for all drug development. And we have done those and there were no signal, no signs that we couldn't continue. We also have to have the formulation done. So you can have this brilliant molecule, but it's just impossible to get into the body. That is working on formulation and manufacturing. And those are done, so we do have a drug product as well. And then we have done phase one studies. And um, this is the first studies you do in patients and we have done two and there was an excellent safety profile with this. So there were no signs of toxicity or any, and the pharmacokinetic looked good. So then we continued into this, what's called phase two development. So this was the original design of phase, our phase two study. And I say original, and we'll come to, back to that in a second. So patients are diagnosed with colon cancer and then they are what we call randomized to be in the control group or to be in the active treatment group with FOXY5. If the patient is in the FOXY5 group, the treatment starts immediately and it continues over the surgery. So as I mentioned previously, all patients have surgery. So after three weeks approximately, most patients have their uh, surgery. The treatment continues until chemotherapy starts and uh, then we follow the patients up to two years after the surgery. So for a patient, they are in the study approximately two years and two, three months, something like that. It's quite a long time. What we could reveal during uh, the fall was that we have unexpected observation in 110 patients and those are ad hoc observations observations. We could see a change in the tumor when it comes to TNA staging and also how the tumor had spread along nerves and vessels. And those are observations, they are substantial. 110 patients is quite some. And to see it after three weeks of treatment, that was unexpected. In animal you can see things fast, but not, not actually in, in humans. We didn't expect this. And this demonstrates that there is a biologic effects of FOXO5 in man, and we had never seen that before. 
So this is a, a picture of Professor Andersson, and he's, of course, very uh, happy, but also this is very interesting data. So we are now changing the study. So this means that those ad hoc observations, they are not counted in clinical development. You have to have the measurements pre-specified. So we are now revising the study, and the measures are to happen at surgery with the parameters I just shown you. And this means that the follow-up time uh, of two years will not happen. We're awaiting uh, the protocol to be approved. So what this has, has done is that we have got some really good insights and we're planning a little different the way forward for FOXY5. So we are revising the study protocol and we expect that uh, the approval will come during spring. So it's from the health authorities in Spain and Hungary we're doing the study. There is an opportunity then to demonstrate demonstrate the effect at surgery, as opposed to these two years after. And thus, less capital is actually needed. We did a recent right issue that gave financing for another year. We also have the two option programs coming up. And uh, then that could secure further uh, financing for the study and other, other things. But it really depends how this will uh, play out. So there is a potential now to explore other cancer therapies in collaboration with others. Uh, it could be that we look into to colon cancer, patients that cannot get chemotherapy, or it could be that we look at patients that have metastasis already, because those metastases, they spread. That could be an opportunity, or rather maybe go to look also at other cancer types, for instance, breast or prostate. So what we're really doing now is a study. That's the, the main focus. Uh, we have to constantly improve the drug formulation to get to the intended market application. And that's something one has to do. Every, every drug candidate have to go through those. We are looking then into other cancer form, RML we have talked about, and this metastatic colon cancer, potentially. And we are looking at patent and continue the business development, interactions with key opinion leaders and regulatory authorities. And least but not the last, we are looking into uh, finding a partner. This is key for us now to collaborate the development of Foxy5. And we, this is the team, we are experienced and we have experience from clinical development, commercialization and business development. And those are our scientific advisors. So I really hope that our research could yield these seeds in the dandelion to stay so that the tumor will not spread. We're not preventing it to happen, but we're preventing it to spread. And those were the highlights that I initially said. It's a new, unique candidate. and We're focusing on colon cancer, but there are other opportunities. And um, this is me, if you would like to reach out. Thank you for all. Thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you. And as you You're mentioned, welcome. you uh, completed a right issue with good results. Could you mm. tell us a bit more about what this means for the company going forward? Well, it meant a lot. To go out with a rights issue at the end of last year is, was, of course, uh, not a timing that anyone would like. I mean, we, have, we are post-pandemic and there is a war going on in Ukraine, uh, but we had to do it. And I'm, I'm, I really say thank you to all our investors because the rights issue, uh, we had a s coverage of 76%. And I've seen the, the statistics from last year, it wasn't as good at all. So I'm really happy and it means a lot. And you also have a subscription period coming up for warrants. Mm -hmm. Would you like to give us your best arguments for why one should subscribe to oh, Absolutely. I think what you have heard today, we now know that Foxy5 is doing something in man. This was the first time that we saw uh, like a proof of efficacy that there is something biologic that this compound is doing. So the, the product has a de-risked by this, I would say. I see. And if we end by looking forward, what can we expect from when this coming period? Well, in the short um, period, we have been invited, and that's actually taking place tomorrow, by a research group in Heidelberg. There are 60 research, uh, researchers, I should say, that only focus on wind signaling. 
uh, not only wind fire, yeah, there's a lot of proteins, but wind fire is of course one. And we were uh, invited to speak at this uh, workshop, so I'm really looking forward to that. That's more the scientific path, and then um, and then we're invited to speak at the Swiss Nordic Bio, that taking place uh, at the end of March. And of course, uh, I think the most that we are eager to looking at is to see uh, the approval of the amendment. I see. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.